Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, March 14th. 11.24 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. What you're looking at is the super split screen over at Volcano Watch, where everything is bumping. Tori Alba erupting vol continuous volcanic acid emissions today. We have Shinmo Dake showing clear lava activity as well as outgassing in both cameras. And down here, we have Saka Sakura Jima or Sakura Hima. But as it was pointed out, Sakura Jima is how uh, the Americans say it. But look at Popo today, as well as Yellowstone, outgassing, Duri Alba, uh, et al. We have some volcanic activity, folks, to talk about. And we'll be covering it in a moment. Let's get on with the update. How about that nor'easter? Thousands are without power as Massachusetts cleans up. Thousands of homes and businesses remain without power in Massachusetts today. After Tuesday's nor'easter, which lashed the state with high winds and dumped a thick blanket of record snow. While weary residents dug out and power restoration efforts are underway, the National Weather Service was keeping an eye on another storm coming exactly this time next week. This particular storm, number three, Brought wind gusts of up to 81 miles per hour that were recorded in East Falmouth and heavy wet snow in the Cape and Bristol and Plymouth, knocking down trees and power lines. According to Massachusetts Emergency Management, there are more than 51,000 customers without power right now. And what they're telling people is that this is a long-term effort. It could take multiple days to get the power up there. Were there records broken? Uh, yes, there were. Let's get to the records. So far, Boston has 56.8 inches of snow, ranking at the 30th. That's it for the most snowfall since record began. But Worcester is looking at the 18th all-time at 86.6 inches. During Tuesday's snowstorm, Boston, Marshfield, Martha's Vineyard, Plymouth, and Hyannis all officially recorded blizzard conditions. Hyannis was in blizzard for 10 hours and 35 minutes, Marshfield for 9 hours, and Falmouth for 8 hours. It's going to be below normal for the rest of the week. Just going to keep this snow around for a little bit, folks. Tuesday storm set several March snow records in southern New England, knocking off ones by the 1993 blizzard that was marking its 25th anniversary Tuesday. In Boston, 14.5 inches of snow fell, setting a record for most snowfall recorded on the 13th and the most snowfall recorded over a one-day period in March. Worcester set the same two records in Tuesday with 21.8 inches of snow, breaking all records since histories have been kept. This isn't the only place records are being broken. But the nor'easter dumped nearly 30 inches in Maine and New Hampshire, 29 inches in Middletown, 28 inches in New Hampshire, in Acton, 26 inches of snow, Sanford and Lymington recorded 24 in Vermont, 26 in Williamston and had 24. Light snow is still falling across the region. Uh, less power outages in Maine and New Hampshire. Erie set the Mar March snowfall record. And that's just the beginning because Erie is about to set the all-time record for a major city for total snowfall in a year. That's currently held by Buffalo, the snowiest major city season ever with 199.4. And Erie is about to surpass the all-time snowiest record ever. Erie, Pennsylvania is nearing 200 inches of snow. The snowiest season of any large U.S. city is held by Buffalo, 199.4 inches, and this is going to break the record set back in the winter of 1976 to 77, shattering a 41-year record, which will only be broken again next year and the year after as we descend into the grand solar minimum. Here we have more snow and more records falling in the Albany area. Doesn't seem to bother the kids. Eight inches of snow that fell in the capital region 2J pushed the march into the fifth place of the snowiest months of March. 
in Albany, the, re the region moved into a tie for fifth place, 32 inches at 8 p.m. Tuesday night. More snow fell overnight and the region with a striking distance of third, 34.7 inches, and fourth place of 34.4. Still breaking the all-time record for the snowiest March, 50.9. Will stand unless the place gets a major storm over the next few days, but still sitting pretty good right there. Fifth top snowiest of all time. Snow breaking the Elko precipitation record with rain and snow in Elko. Elko set a precipitation record Wednesday with nearly three quarters of an inch of equivalent rain and snow. That was enough to break a record set back in 1889. Dalton minimum much. That's a centennial record being broken. Actually, 138.9 years. We look at the seismic map. We have activity at the New Madrid and up in New England because of that huge blizzard, low pressure system sitting up in this region, probably kicking off this earthquake. We now know that earthquakes are electrical in nature. This is being accepted by the mainstream. If we go one day all magnitude, we can see that there is a slight uptick in the New Madrid area here with the Ridgely quake and the main shock in Greenville. Nothing significant, but we'll be watching it. That's a heads up. Some interesting quakes of note we could point out by looking at this map quickly. This is a very odd quake happening over here, 5.0 in Namibia. And we have a quake of note of 4.5 popping off in Romania. Pretty rare, rare quake happening there. But we're in a rare time, so these things are normal. We, we report on them every night. Sakura Jima. We watched the footage, Volcanic Ash Advisory, today. It's getting a 4 out of 5 in the warning. And it is erupting with quite vigor. Kirishima apparently just exploded as we we're making the video. Let's make sure that this is correct. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's just happening right now. Let's go over to UKZ and see if we can find this. So yeah, we're we're watching the Shinmo time lapse, but we can come over here and let's let's get live and see if we can see what's going on here. We'll let that parse up real quick. Volcanic thunder has been reported by scientists for the first time, proving the electrical nature of volcanoes and earthquakes. With the scientific information is just rolling in. It is crazy. The best way to hear volcanic thunder is right here in this article. They give you a, a link right to the uh, SoundCloud to hear the actual volcanic thunder here in 10 times. But if volcanic eruptions aren't dramatic enough, so they can also cause lightning and thunder because of the electric nature of our universe, our planet, and its connection to the sun. Scientists are still trying to figure out precisely why it happens. But volcanic eruptions produce lightning. It's rare to actually see it. However, we know they actually produce it. And here we have the sound of the thunder, a well-documented phenomenon with lightning. And this is coming from uh, Bogoslav Volcano in the Aleutians up in the Bering Sea. So I'll leave you links to this article. It's quite interesting. As the electric universe model gets proven here on Earth time and time again. Let's see if we can come over here and see this uh, volcano erupting. If not, I'll leave you links to this. You want to come over here and see the live footage of Kyushu, which is erupted according to Volcano Discovery. And if not, just come over and ask the guys up in this uh, chat room what's going on. And they'll get you up to date. So if you don't know what's happening and you come in at a weird time, just ask the guys up in the room here and they'll tell you what's happening. Looks like every all's quiet on the Western Front, according to the live streams. Real quick, the uh, solar storm that was going to destroy the planet is only being forecast at G1 for today and tomorrow due to this coronal hole here and the coronal hole stream, the plasma stream associated with it, which is dumping from our sun.
and you can see here the phi angle shifting in the last 24 hours, which is indicative of the coronal whole stream trying to couple with us. Earlier, we had this little perturbation, which was not it, but here we can see the coronal hole now coupling with us up in this region, and it is driving geomagnetic instability up to KP4. Still not in G1 storm that will couple up here at KP5. Nothing to worry about. The only thing we have to really worry about is if we're missing out on the Aurora view because it is blazing up here in upper New, uh, New Brunswick and northern Canada. So get outside and take a look at the Aurora. Might even be penetrating down into Maine, northern Maine here. So heads up for the Aurora watch tonight. There is a fireball uh, exploding over Oklahoma. Texas, the sonic boom reported today. Day daylight fireball was recorded streaking across Oklahoma and Texas, 2116 UTC on March 13th. The object turned blindingly bright before it disappeared and was followed by a sonic boom. <laughs> they must watch the channel. No, let's be serious, folks. There are no meteor uh, showers at this time of year, and we've had multiple large events entering our atmosphere. So that's just something of note to be noticing, especially ones that are noticed during the daytime. Heads up, Texas. We never liked you anyway. Scientists say sun will be cooler by 2050. CBS De Detroit, what's up? And they warn of a mini ice age. Yes, it's true. Will solar cooling solve Earth's problem of global warming? It is already. And if you don't notice it, then you haven't been watching. But according to CBS, we are entering a mini ice age. And there will be a massive cooling cycle which could lead to a mini ice age by 2050. We're seeing the effects now. So I'll leave you links to this article as the narrative slowly shifts. And they show scientists proving everything. Well, let me prove to you that the government doesn't care about you. And they're going to let you shelter in place when the next major catastrophe happens. So let's talk about long-term food storage. For long-term needs and where permitted, gradually building a supply of food that will last a long time that you can use to stay alive, such as wheat, rice, and beans, these items can last over 30 years once properly stored. This article will give you the insights that you need to know in packaging recommendations, food that lasts 30 years, product recommendations, oxygen absorbers, which are key, pouches, buckets, mylar bags, and it will give you a list of the dry goods that we'll store for long term. Here are 30 plus years, the first four items, the rest for around 30. These are great items that are cheap easy to attain and easy to store in a simple closet or under your bed. So you want to start prepping for the future to survive and thrive? Take a look at this article and get started with some long-term food storage using oxygen absorbers and standard prepping techniques. This article will get you started. If you didn't hear our radio show tonight, it was great. We still have a few connectivity issues we're solving. But we now have a producer that's going to be producing the show. Scott McDonald, one of our Patreons, reached out. He has experience in this. He's going to be producing the show from Arizona down in Tucson. Where is that? Uh, yeah, in Arizona. So hopefully we can get things worked out so that we'll be crystal clear on the air every Wednesday night, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tonight we were talking about chapters 3 through 6 in our book, Cold Times, which you can get at the Oppenheimer Ranch special with free shipping for $14.95. If you click on the link below this video, you don't have to go to Amazon and pay too much. They're charging $19. Bucks. So buy from us. We're already correcting the book, guys. There's an errata. Copies printed prior to me reading the entire book made a mistake about the cannabis section where they she switched sativa and indica and it was unfortunate but it's a single word omission or switch that had to be fixed it's now fixed the cannabis section should be correct because that is the key to the future in surviving and thriving uh when the systems fail because we're going to need health care and cannabis full plant extract allows your immune system to attain biostasis. Now, homeostasis in the immune system for the for a biological entity is important. And that's where hemp lucid comes in. Guys, I support this product. I know the guys who own the company. I met them at Observing the Frontier. And they like 
so much what I said about them last night in our last video that they reached back out to me and guess what they're giving us? All of the people that uh, access Hemp Lucid through our exclusive link are going to get 20% off every single product they offer. Nowhere else in the world can you get this offer through Hemp Lucid. It's full price, folks, unless you're with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And you click the link below. For all those people who purchased the product yesterday when I supplied the link, I apologize. When you buy in the future, click this new link and you'll get 20% off all of their products. So go there and buy some health for the future. There are no side effects no psychoactive effects. You could pass every drug test uh, that the feds throw at you. This is pure plant health. I recommend the whole plant CBD MCT oil for fast uptake. If you have pain, get the 1500 milligram. If you're just dabbling, try one of the products at low concentration, 150 milligrams at 29 bucks. Vape some, eat some, mix it in with your fruit juice. See if it fixes the problems that uh, modern medicine can't because this is the way of nature. Plant medicine is the future. Hemp Lucid is the way to go, folks. I can't say enough about the product. I'll leave you links. It's all 20% off forever moving forward, and I will talk about it every night. And that's a boom. And a heads up. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. I'm a little exhausted from the radio program. Now's the time to start preparing. Check out the uh, article on the dry food storage. For a few dollars a week, you can be stockpiling a bag of dry beans. Once you get a five-gallon bucket full, you seal it up, and it's good for 30 years. Be safe, everybody.